Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more it's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to SDS-X, a fantastic new drum sampler. It's a simple drum sampler but quite um, effective and I'm sure it will develop in something uh, really special. So let's go through the, uh, the application itself. As you can see you have a um, pad here which works really nice and if you use your fingers it's very responsive extremely responsive which is really nice to see and to have a UI which is very responsive up here you have the selection of different kits so as you can see, analog, yellow, citrus, etc, etc. So it's nice and you have also your favorite banks um, here, uh, which you can also add. As you can see, I added uh, a new one here for sound for more. You can also save your kit as well, but please pay also attention to um, <clears throat> the upgrade that you might need to have, particularly if you want to share kit. It's really nice, a lot of different samples as you um, would expect. Really nice indeed. And up here you can uh, share your uh, uh, current kit and you can also export the pattern audio which is really nice and as you can see on the right hand side here you have a play button because um, the application has uh, also a sequencer inside it really nice Okay, so lots to have fun with. So let's explore a little bit more the application. Up here you have um, a symbol, this lock symbol. If you click on it, you unlock it. And uh, what happens is you have this spanner which uh, uh, becomes available on each of the pads. And if you click on it, you can further customize that pad. And which is quite nice. So let's go back, for example, to the default kit. And let's take this pad, the clap one. Let's customize it. First of all, you see sample one here, and then you see sample two. Yeah, you can add two samples for the pad. Let me show you straight away. You click here where it says tap or drag sample here, and you select another sample, which you can also audition before selecting it. So let's try. Let's try that as an air free. Now, you can audition this clicking up here, and you can hear now that um, it is a mixed sound from sample one and sample two. And the behavior in terms of um, the way that the sounds are combined are dictated here where it says sample mode, but I'll come to it in a second. So you can edit the title for the pad. You can also change the color, which is very important as you move further with using the application. You can also move left and right to the next and previous part as well using the arrows here, and you can close the interface there. You can change the pitch for a particular uh, sample. You can do that on sample number two. Of course, you can double click as you would expect, it goes back to default. You can change the pan as well, left and right for both samples. Hopefully if you have headphones, you can hear that. And you can change the level as well, which is really nice. Scrolling down, this is where you can change the behavior. So at the moment we are in one single, one shot. So if you click, there's one shot and uh, it stops. You can change that to be gate. So you need to hold for the sound to continue, but the course that depends on the type of sound. So if you click and stop straight away, and um, you have a, a less open gate, or if you click and hold, you can hear the entire sound. You can also have it in toggle mode. So 
like so. And you can also have it on repeat and you have different uh, type uh, of uh, uh, intervals in terms of how quickly it will repeat. So let me show you the first one. Of course, you need to hold uh, the button. As you can see, you can change. <clears throat> so that's really, really straightforward and um, really nice. So let's go back to have gate mode, actually. Next, you have the sample mode. So at the moment, you have the sample which are mixed, but you can have them on a rotation basis. So remember up here, we selected the, the clap for sample one and for sample two, we selected that the snare free. So they are rotating between one to the other. You can have it in random mode as well. And you can have it velocity switching and velocity mixing. So let's start with velocity switching. So let's exit here. And um, what you see here, these cogs, click on it and uh, check uh, where it says velocity. And the moment it's set to top, but you can change different ones. And so you have top, you have control, uh, pressure, um, fix, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When it's fixed, you hear only sample one. If you have top, you hear one sample from the bottom of the pad. And as you move to the top, it switches to the other sample. And you can have another mode as well, which, which is center. And you can have also pressure as well. I like actually to keep it on top so I can move from one sample to sample one. So from sample two at the bottom to sample one at the top. So <clears throat> remember that because it comes quite handy. And that, of course, was for uh, velocity switching. But you can also have velocity mix. In that case, it will mix up between one sample to the next. So that's how you can hear that is uh, uh, mixing as the velocity changes from sample two, mixing into sample one, which is uh, uh, very nice. You can also have it in loop mode. So if you activate that, you will go in loop mode based on the length of course of the sample. You can have poly mode on if that's what you need. You can also have a mute group, which is similar to um, the choke. Uh, functionality in other drum pads and you can have it responding to velocity or not and you can also set the ranges of velocity here. Finally, uh, down here you can set it to receive and send MIDI messages and you click on that and you can enable or disable that, select the channel and also the note. So based on the note that you receive, you might enable for that, pound, for that pad to trigger. So that's very useful indeed. As I mentioned, up here you have a play button for the sequencer. You also have a record button here, and that allows you to record patterns, which is nice. You have your tempo here, and you can also have the metronome on. You, can, you have also these three dots, and here is where you can change your tempo. You can tap to have your custom tempo, and you can add additional um, things for uh, the sequencer. So you can establish to have a, a swing if you want quantization on, and if you want to change the gate length as well, depending on your taste and what you're trying to achieve. And finally, you can change the pan and level for the metronome, which is very important in terms of recording. These arrows here allows you to maximize the view on pads, which is very good if you want to do live performance. And then you have this view here. We are in standalone mode at the moment, but it is a fully a UV3 compliant. So you see the screen is split into two. And at the moment here is showing the sequencer because I activated the sequencer here. But you can go to effect, you can go to the sample manager, and you can go to settings. I cannot go to the mixer, which is the second option because it's already shown here underneath. But if I was changing, if I was to change the bottom view to effect, then I would be able to go to the mixer up here. So now let's keep it as per default. So we have the sequencer at the top and we have the mixer at the bottom. Now, 
if you, as I just shown, you can play sequences, but you can also edit them as well. This lock button uh, gives you the ability to actually lock the sequencer or the, uh, the sequences as you move from one kit to the other. Okay, and there is also a very useful option to disable the sequencer here, which becomes really handy, particularly when you're using it as an AUV3 instance. So remember that just in case you wonder why you cannot trigger just the pads and you have a sequence going, just disable the sequencer in that particular case. So let's go back to the sequencer. So here you see steps, so 16 steps, and um, yeah, up here, you click and hold and you can select a pattern up to 16, okay? And if you select more than one pattern, it will chain the patterns and it will play one after the other, which is useful. Then you can also copy a pattern. So you click one pattern, you copy it into the next one. You can delete a pattern and you can also set the pattern length as well from 1 to 16, which is very good. So I'm going to leave the pattern um, length uh, as standard, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to select a different pattern where there is no, uh, nothing recording, in this case, pattern number 10. As you can see, it's empty. So if I click play, it will not play anything because uh, there, is, there isn't anything in that pattern. So now that I have selected that pattern, in order to stop to create that pattern and change it, you have to click here where it says stop to program. Then it tells you to select the pad. So let's select the kick. And here you can change the velocity and also um, how many times that uh, um, sample is triggered, similar to the ratchet function in other application. So for example, let's click up here and let's click play. This the four steps, it will start to have that kick, uh, that bass kick sound. And it's very simple to continue programming. Select another pad and then just go for it. So simple, so easy, so high heart. So let's just choose different steps like so. Very straightforward. Now let's copy this, click, and then let's select number 11. So what happens is, let's go to number 11 now, like so, and you find I, the same pattern because I've copied it. Let's modify that a little bit. Let's choose a uh, hi-hat open. So let's do something like um, so, and um, maybe like that. Let's try. Perfect. And now if you want to change the two, click again here where you select the pattern, select pattern number 10 and then pattern number 11. You can see the changes in colors in pattern number 10. And now let's play. So as you can see, the um, application has changed the two patterns together. So as you can see, it's very, very easy to use as an application. So let's exit now program mode and let's talk about the other view. So down here, you have the uh, mixer, which you can see, as I mentioned a moment ago, you cannot see it at the top because it's already selected in the bottom view. You, you can decide to add some uh, delay, some reverb, you can have your pan left and right, you can mute and solo. And if you want to see the other pads, just simply click and hold and move slide to the left or to the right so you can see all the different pads and you can change the setting for each one of them. Next, we go to the effects. So you have low pass. And in order to change that, you have to click on the L here so you can change in the cutoff and the resonance. So let's play. And you can change the master as well. So you see the M highlighted here. So click and drag that. The high pass, you can add, change the reverb settings and also the delay settings, which um, is fantastic, really good. Next, you have your sample manager. Here is where you can search through your samples and you can also import samples, so import from files, which um, is very good. And look at the amount of samples you have. And I would, would just recommend as well that you go for uh, the upgrade. So it gives you the additional functionality 
that I'm sure you will need. And finally, you have the settings here. And in the settings here, you can change your buffer size. You can have it to save battery mode. Now I mentioned the disable sequencer, which comes really, really handy. The velocity mode um, changes, which um, um, as I showed you earlier, depending on your uh, preferences, it might be useful to, um, to change. And then you have setting for your haptics and um, able to link Bluetooth MIDI. And also you can set something, you can enable or not to receive MIDI. Up here, change setting the sources if you want it to pass through and similar setting for MIDI output as well. And uh, here you have a hard panning if that's what you want to set. And then you can go to the store and of course go for the pro version, which I definitely recommend. And you have here also access to manual, which is quite good. It's very comprehensive. So, but hopefully with this tutorial as well, you have everything you need. But now let me show you to you how it works also inside, for example, why not uh, Loopy Pro. So let's close this and let's load um, um, Loopy Pro. Okay. And let's create a new project like so. Let's delete that particular um, uh, microphone uh, input because we don't need it and then let's add uh, a audio unit input and here you will find SDS X okay and then of course you can bring this up and you can have the keyboard and here you have all your sample and this is where becomes important that the disabled sequencer functionality because if I click play to play on Loopy Pro, of course it will not play at the moment because I don't have a tempo selected and also a measure. Okay. As you can hear, the sequencer has started, but let's say that I wanted to program some uh, um, pattern progressively and record those inside each loops. How can I do that uh, with the sequencer triggering all the time? Well, that is where you click on the settings and then you disable the sequencer. And so next time, if you click play, the sequencer is not going, but you can record the different pads inside the Loopy Pro. Okay, so just uh, keep in mind that if you're using inside a audio unit host, you might have to disable the sequencer unless you want to record the sequencer or itself, of course. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this uh, um, tutorial on SDSX. Thanks to Ryan for giving me the opportunity to review it. And as always, see you next time. Bye.